all participants were encouraged to engage in physical activity according to their abilities and to visit a counseling psychologist at least once a month. Over the course of six months, the team tracked the men's levels of blood glucose and glycated hemoglobin, or HbA1c, using those measures to establish diabetes status. By the end of the study period, one participant's readings indicated complete remission of diabetes, while another suggested partial remission. Overall, the test group showed a significant increase in HDL cholesterol levels, greater weight loss, and lower HbA1c levels than the control group. The median daily dose of insulin for the test group decreased to less than half of what it was at the start of the trial. The results fit into a broader stream of evidence, hinting that substantial weight loss can reverse symptoms of type 2 diabetes. But the findings are not definitive. More studies on a larger, more varied sample population monitored over more than six months would help build a stronger case for the benefits of the nutrition intervention applied in the study. Still, the implications are encouraging. For at least one subset of patients with type 2 diabetes, the specially designed, low-calorie diet could be safe and effective in establishing a healthier lifestyle. Australia is facing an increasing epidemic of type 2 diabetes. There are now approximately 1 million people living with diabetes and around 100,000 new diagnoses each year. Obesity is thought to be the primary cause of type 2 diabetes in people who are genetically predisposed. In part one, we explained how inflammation in type 2 diabetes destroys the pancreas tissue and dramatically decreases insulin production. Here we describe the insulin receptor in type 2 diabetes. What we have discovered is the molecular detail of how the hormone insulin binds to its so-called receptor protein on the surface of a cell and instructs that cell to take up glucose from the blood and to store it as an energy source. The receptor itself actually spans the cell membrane, so it has a part outside, a part inside, and insulin binds to the part that is outside. Insulin is a small molecule whose structure was determined a long time ago in 1969, but it's been unknown how it interacts with the receptor, and that is what we have discovered. And its interaction I've characterized as a molecular handshake as the two proteins dock together. When insulin binds to the outside parts of the receptor, it brings the two halves of the receptor together, and at the same time, the two parts inside of the cell, unwind and make contact. In a case report of the successful management of type 2 diabetes with a lifestyle intervention, a 45-year-old fellow took responsibility for health into his own hands and sought to defeat his disease and get off the drugs by eating foods purported to be anti-diabetic. But how strong is the evidence for, let's say, ginger? Diabetes is reaching pandemic levels and requires safe, affordable, and effective therapies. So what about the potential of ginger in the prevention and treatment? Well, in a petri dish, increasing exposure to ginger compounds improves blood sugar uptake of muscle cells almost as much as the popular diabetes drug metformin. And in rats, ginger might work even better than metformin. But Weight and blood sugar reduction observed in rodent models does not necessarily translate to humans. In this study, a combination of nutraceuticals caused mice to lose 30% of their body weight in one month, but in people, no benefit compared to placebo. I mean, you don't know if something works in humans until you put it to the test. If you feed people refined flour white bread with a cup of water, this is what happens to their blood sugars over the next two hours. But drink some unsweetened green tea with that white bread instead, and there's less of a blood sugar spike. Same with cinnamon tea, and same with ginger tea, made by mixing a tablespoon of grated fresh ginger in a cup of hot water. Uh, OK, but these were healthy, normal subjects. What about the effects of ginger? in diabetics. 
This was the first study of its kind. Diabetics randomized to take a teaspoon of ground ginger a day for two months, hidden in pill form, so they could compare it with identical-looking sugar pill placebos, and ginger supplementation decreased the levels of insulin, which is a good thing, and lowered triglycerides and LDL cholesterol, but without a significant effect on blood sugars. Now, look, heart disease is the leading killer of diabetics, so a 13% drop in LDL bad cholesterol would be reason enough to shell out the nickel a day it would cost to add that much ginger to your diet, but it would have been nice to see an improvement in blood sugar control. I mean, there was that drop in insulin levels, which suggests improved insulin sensitivity, and indeed there was a significant drop in insulin resistance, so maybe they just didn't give ginger long enough time to work? Well, I mean, that, that, that was two months. How about three months? Even less ginger, just 1.6 grams, less than a teaspoon a day, but for 12 weeks. And maybe ginger can reduce blood sugars after all and decrease inflammation, cutting C-reactive protein levels in half. OK, what about going back to just eight weeks, but this time using a higher dose, three grams a day, or about one and a half teaspoons, and a significant decrease in fasting blood sugars and long-term blood sugar control in the ginger group, thereby showing the effect of ginger in controlling diabetes. Check it out. The placebo group continued to get worse. The ginger group got better. Similarly amazing randomized double-blind placebo control results for a teaspoon a day for 12 weeks, and for a teaspoon and a half, all better in the ginger group, all worse in the non-ginger group all significantly different, just because of a little cheap, safe, simple side effect, free spice. Put all the studies together, and they clearly demonstrate that ginger can lower blood sugar levels and improve long-term blood sugar control, and at a totally manageable dose. I mean, you could just dump a teaspoon of ginger powder in a cup of hot water and just drink it down. So, overall, adding a little spice to our life may serve as a delicious and sensible way to maintain a healthy body.